they were really agitated. I could hear their, their footfalls in the snow and their breath. And I was hyperventilating. I was so excited and I had such an adrenaline rush that I was like, I was really having a hard time breathing. they don't attack people, but this was the situation where I was in their pen. They seemed fairly agitated. And they're just intense creatures. I mean, you just look into their eyes and they're just, oh. It feels like they're looking right through you. What actually happened here in Yellowstone over 60 years ago? Well, it's a pretty simple case of economics. Our fellow Americans killed off the wolves, all of them. Hunters saw the wolf as a competitor for big game trophies. Ranchers saw the wolf as the destroyer of their livestock. So in the year 1916, after Congress appropriated the funds for destroying the wolf on public lands, the Yellowstone wolf extermination campaign began. It was the start of an all out war on this creature. Within the decade, the federal government had exterminated an incredible 60,000 wolves, and it wasn't until 1973 that the Endangered Species Act declared, at long last, that wolves must be preserved. The quicker we're out of here, the better. Okay, grab that chain. Is that one right here? The day had come for the wolves to be set free, really set free now in the wild, and the tension was everywhere. What would happen? Would the wolves bound for freedom? Would Natasha and Arnold stay together? Yeah, but yeah. they went great. Down at the bottom of the hill, they were already celebrating the breakout. But when nothing happened, they began testing for the radio signals that come from each wolf's electronic collar. They tested again and again, but no movement could be detected. What was going on here? Finally, they figured the wolves were nervous, afraid to go through the door where humans had gone before. Cutting a panel out of the fence gave them new hope. With all this help, the wolves were still reluctant to make their move. When we return, we'll see whether Natasha and Arnold actually stay together in the wild. Yellowstone Park, like any landscape, has had to face the scars of nature. So all this burnout that we're seeing like right around here, that was from the fires of, of 88. Yeah, right? in that year, about half the park burned. You gotta remember that Yellowstone is more than just about an ethic of stewardship and responsibility. It's also supposed to be a place where natural processes are allowed to function unfettered from the hand of mankind. And that fits perfectly with wolf restoration. There, there's an important function, an important process, wolves killing elk and, and other things that's been missing from Yellowstone for a long, long time. Last winter, we filmed this dramatic wolf kill. It was a tremendous event for the wolves, and it's just what happens to some elk. It's not right, it's not wrong. It's just what wolves do. 
And it's not that she had any less of a desire to live than they did. It's just that this time she couldn't get away. This time they won. Next time, maybe they won't. And that's what wolves do. The elk are no longer going to be able to be quite so lazy and just lay uh, down in the Lamar River and camp out there for the entire winter. They're going to have to be looking over their shoulders because the wolves will be down there. They will be looking for the weak elk to prey upon. So we'll have an elk herd that moves. Yellowstone Park, the whole system here, evolved with wolves as a part of it. One of the reasons that elk are so swift and wily and where mountain sheep live in the mountains is because of predators like wolves. That's a big bull they killed. You see that? It's incredible. There's a, a famous line that uh, says that what whittled the antelope so swift but the wolf's tooth. The elk and the deer and all these things are the animals we admire largely because of their impacts and, and kind of uh, interactions with large predators such as wolves. And when you have wolves out of the pictures, ecologically it leaves a big hole. It takes a sophisticated radio tracking system to keep tabs on the wolves once they're released in the wild. The aerial view gives trackers an advantage to monitor wolves over great distances. Arnold and Natasha were tracked on a regular basis, but one day, they disappeared. They were gone for two weeks before, miraculously, the biologists found them again outside park boundaries. What some people had hoped and others feared had happened. Arnold was dead, shot, skinned, and beheaded. But Natasha's fate was still unknown. Now that you have the wolves that have these collars on them, that if you do shoot the wolf, there's a sensor in the collar, as I understand, to us out here on the outside that have to live in Montana and earn a living in Montana, growing and selling animals. Nothing is more fearful, you know, to have something out there that Number one, when it does come to attack you, you have no right to defend yourself. So you can't shoot the wolf. You've got to call the, the proper authorities to take care of these animals. And by the time they show up, you've lost, you know, some of your herd. I understand. Are you a rancher? Yeah. Okay. And uh, over the past year, have you, have you lost any livestock to wolves? Uh, no, just to coyotes. The man who shot Arnold was convicted of the premeditated killing of a wolf. He got six months in jail, probation, and a $10,000 fine. So, Mike, uh, since last spring, I talked to a bunch of the ranchers around the area, and, and, you know, there was just a lot of concerns and fears about this whole deal. Has anything changed since then? I mean, has anything... No, no. As a matter of fact, I would guess they'd argue that some of their fears have come true because of the activities of certain wolves. Sheep rancher Horace Brailsford told me he knows firsthand what happens when wolves stray onto private land. Before the wolf... I ran about 500 ewes, and we'd usually get 1,000, 1,200 lambs out of all of those ewes. And we had our, our guard dogs completely solved our predator problem. They'd even chase eagles off the property, and certainly coyotes and fox. And we hadn't lost a sheep in about three years. And then the wolf program started in the park, and uh, it took about a year before we actually got a wolf coming out of the park. Since the first wolf came out, I've lost seven sheep. Horace could no longer face the presence of wolves nearby, so he started breeding horses. But for many ranchers, wolf reintroduction has caused conflict. At the Anderson Ranch, just down the road, mother and son are on opposite sides. They just get run over by cars, and they get into trouble, like some have, and then be shot. They, they, uh, their, their lives are completely, completely uh, altered, and they didn't, they don't want to be down here. They want to be back up in the woods in Canada or in, uh, on the North Slope somewhere. Well, I think I'm one of the rare, I'm talking about as rare as the other endangered breeds in the, in the area. 
because I'm actually for them. Uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, I think I'm excited about it because I see this as really an important uh, sort of reinforcement of the idea that there's got to be diversity maintained in the system, even if it's in the form of predators. A private conservation group, Defenders of Wildlife, encouraged by other groups like the National Wildlife Federation, took responsibility for reimbursing ranchers for livestock verifiably lost to wolves. We felt it was very important that the federal government not do that. That has done a lot to help the situation because there's not a huge governmental bureaucracy, a loss is verified, and a check is cut right away. We see this as a struggle, a debate, over fear versus knowledge. We want to choose that path carefully and not choose the path of fear. We don't kid ourselves to think that the world starts and stops with wolf restoration. And if a wolf causes a problem, we'll remove that wolf from the program. This program is going to fit in to the Yellowstone ecosystem. That's the only way it's worth doing. We don't want wolves teaching other wolves how to kill livestock. That's one thing that the livestock interests and the conservation interests have in common. We do not want wolves out here learning how to kill livestock. We want them feeding on their natural prey. The natural world of Yellowstone, in small ways and large, it can only be described as a celebration. Coyote and a badger helping each other hunt. And after hunting together, they dine together. Without Arnold, Natasha was somehow off balance, left without a mate, no longer protected, and outside park boundaries. The Wolf Project team could only hope they'd find her before it was too late. Knowing she was nearby and in danger, U.S. Fish and Wildlife and Park Services set a trap in hopes of saving Natasha. The track goes up the road, I think. I can't see good, but I think it's her face I can see there that under them logs. She was successfully captured, but needed to be sedated before she could be moved. When Natasha was checked out, it was confirmed that she'd had puppies. And so the drama continued for the Rose Creek oh, Pack. Yeah. Well, Where were Natasha's puppies? Time was running out. So panic set in. And we started thinking about, you know, where she, could she have carried these pups? Fortunately, one of our biologists remembered that she had been located a couple times higher up on the mountain. And so a couple of our guys went up there looking uh, for some evidence of those pups. Fortunately, they cut across a wolf track and a little bit of snow, a uh, wolf track in the mud. And finally, they were standing there, and they heard a little, <coughs> little whimpering. Look in a rock crevice, and there's a wolf pup looking out at them. Six. Good job. Got him. I can't reach any further, but... Take your time, guys. Got him. Right, there he is. Hold him right up here, Joe. Ooh, look at, seven. That, look at them gap. Look yeah. at that gap. Oh, Joe, just hold him right like that. What you doing, guy? Huh? That's Joe Jr. Let's oh, count yeah. the males and females. You back in there, yeah. weren't you? Huh? Yeah, yeah. we just lost do that, huh? Right. Male, female, what can you tell? A female. A wolf named Joey. Yeah. There you go. Stay with us as a new storm rolls into the mountains, rocking Natasha's world once again. Yep.